Yes, yes, I know. Before anyone gets on me, all the gear, all the time. I'm well aware, I've already crashed, hit a deer with shorts on. I'm not a smart man. But we're just out here riding around, having a great day. And they got the flags up in celebration of late 4th of July. And today's just a beautiful day. We're gonna go out flying and I figured we'd do something a little different. I was riding around today and I kind of thought of a concept that I've always applied to my flying, and I figured we'd kind of discuss it today. I'm sure it's a thing that a lot of people do anyway, but I think bringing it up as a conscious decision can help you improve as a pilot, be safer, gain skill, that sort of thing. So we're gonna take a dive into the more philosophical side of things today, I guess. We'll do that as we fly around this afternoon. Currently, we're under a TFR because President Trump is within 30 miles. So he's headed out at uh, 445. So after that, we got the green light and we'll do some flying. Let's roll the intro. So we made it out to the park somewhat early. Winds are mad calm and there's some low clouds. I think they're about 3,500 feet. Judson's already up trying to catch them and I have to go catch up to him and hopefully we'll get a special treat and fly above the clouds. Um, but update on my motor situation. Last episode, I discussed the whole explosion thing. I have a new exhaust on order. Um, it's not due to arrive for a couple more days. So I'm flying the NXT still, which has the Moster factory, which has a ton of power. So I should be able to catch up the Judson. Also, Jacqueline is in work till seven o'clock tonight. So she's gonna be running over here um, right after she gets out. We should have a little bit of time to get a flight in with her at sunset. But first I'm gonna go try to chase these clouds and catch up the Judson. And hopefully it works out when we get above the clouds. By definition way the hell up here uh, the reservoir over there and uh, this is just cloud base sometimes you can't really tell what the clouds are like looking at them from the ground obviously this is one of those cases but these guys are a little bit too almighty for me today so I just cut my motor the old Moster factory she's a freaking powerhouse um, but I'm not really feeling like going to 8,000 feet today. I think uh, the 3,500 TAF that I was looking at was a different set of clouds and the 8,000 foot TAF was the real deal. Is that Air Force One? So yeah, instead of going above the clouds, I just cut my motor and we're gonna glide silently back down to the park. One of my favorite things to do. Um, but the concept I wanted to talk about today was basically having a good feedback loop. Back in college, I didn't learn a whole lot, but one of the things that I found interesting and kind of kept on or held on to was the concept of a feedback loop. So the concept of a feedback loop is basically you have an input that goes to some sort of process and then you have an output. 
And that would just be a simple, you know, straight line. But the feedback loop idea is that you evaluate that output and make corrections to the input to get your desired result. I think that concept can be applied to pretty much anything that requires skill, but I think it works absolutely perfectly with the idea of paramotors, motorcycles, any high risk, high demand, um, skill driven activity. Now my example of this sort of thing is like, uh, for example, I just did a launch and as that process is happening, I'm thinking, okay, did I hold on to my A's long enough? Did I drop them too early? Did I apply power at the right time? Did the wing overshoot a little bit? You're never just going about something mindlessly and watching it happen and not reflecting upon it. Constantly, as I'm doing things, I'm always thinking, even just little minute things, like I just made that turn, did I weight shift into it? And I think doing that throughout your entire progression obviously is going to increase your skill exponentially because if you develop bad habits you're just going to keep on to those bad habits and your piloting is going to suffer by having a good feedback loop you're always constantly improving so another example wing overs they're a highly intricate type thing uh, it may look like you're just yanking left yanking right and going upside down over the wing seamlessly but it really takes a whole lot of finesse and constantly i'm always thinking through my wing overs did i time that right i should have waited a little bit longer and an example of not doing that is i've met pilots who come down from a set of wing overs and they're like man did you see that i freaking took five collapses and it was awesome those wing overs were great and it's like dude seriously collapses on your wing overs that's not a thing that's just mindlessly going about something and not reflecting upon it um, and improving. Now, this can be done at a micro or macro level. And my examples are constantly as you're doing things, as you're taking off, like seconds after thinking, okay, did I do that right? On a bigger scale, um, after a whole flight, I always find myself laying in bed thinking, what went well, what went wrong, what could I have done better? And a very interesting thing is a buddy of mine, Frank, shout out to Frank, I'm sure he's watching, uh, is an airline pilot. And he has these cards, which I actually have in my phone case here. Uh, it's a little card and it says, crew debrief, what went well? Why? What could have gone better? Why? What will we do next time? And I thought that was kind of an excellent example of the feedback loop idea. He said that they sit down with a co-pilot after a flight and ask those exact questions. They go through a debrief and think about what went wrong, what could have gone better. I think it's true generally that a lot of accidents happen because of a compilation of small errors. And by constantly thinking about what could I have done better, you kind of start to fix those small errors before they can compile into larger ones. So for the launching example, if you're a guy that's not leaning back hard enough, and that's not something that you recognize and fix right away, now every launch you're not leaning back and you're not doing it as efficiently as possible. Now one day, let's say there was a little bit of a gust of wind that caused your wing to surge. If you're not leaning back, the motor's pushing you at the ground, now your wing surges, unloads, and now you're going to face plant and maybe break a propeller. But if you had thought about that feedback loop on your launch and say, gee, am I leaning back hard enough? Then you probably could have corrected that error right away from the beginning. Yep. 
So the reason I kind of got quiet on that landing approach was because as I'm descending down, I checked the flag for the wind direction and to my surprise, it was pegged straight out and like the trees were bending over. And I was like, oh geez, this'll be fun. But it wasn't that bad up until maybe a hundred feet. Then it got a little bumpy, but just demanded a little more concentration. Um, but the freaking balloonists are up and there's like a thunderstorm and we're anxiously watching them to see how it turns out. But Jacqueline's here, cutting the cubic. Hopefully these balloons don't get sucked into the dang thunderstorm. All right, it's me from the future. It's a day later. I'm actually editing this video right now and I'm cutting this video into two parts because what happened next is Judson went and flew my Scout NXT and Judson's 125 pounds and he's primarily flown a top 80, which is 80 cc's. This is a tuned up 185. So it's putting out way more power than he's ever used to. Um, but he flew it and we got his reaction and it was really cool and I wanna make that its own dedicated video. So make sure you're subscribed so you see that. But to kind of conclude the whole idea, the feedback loop thing. I think it's kind of self-explanatory and I'm sure a lot of people do it anyway, probably on a subconscious level. But I thought bringing it up as a concept in and of itself um, is a good thing to bring it up to a conscious level of thinking about that whole feedback loop and self-evaluating as you go. I wanna let you guys know today we did our final restock of the new line of the Risky Biscuit stuff, which is the summer edition shirt and the fly or die skull shirt. So those two are fully restocked and they will not be restocked again because our giveaway is ending on the 13th of July. If you haven't heard, we're giving away training to Aviator Paramotors November Thanksgiving course. One lucky winner is gonna win that uh, slot in their training session. They're gonna go down to Florida and they're gonna learn how to fly with some of the best instructors in the country. And I will be there as well. We'll document the process, upload it to YouTube. It'll be really cool. In order to enter, all you gotta do is make a purchase on tuckergot.com and uh, fill out the second form in the description. I just remembered as well, we just um, added new airfoil shirts in different colors than we ever have before. So make sure you check that stuff out. It's the first link in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned to the next one to see Judson fly the NXT mobile. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, peace.